how to make your cucumbers go from flower to developing fruit? Well, the answer is pollination. But if you don't have a thriving pollinator garden, you may need to look for other options. And the next best thing is hand pollination. So you're gonna to wanna to locate a male flower, the one that has no fruit at the end, as you can see. And you're gonna to wanna to strip the petals off all around the edge to reveal the pollen in the center. Then you're gonna to wanna to locate your female flower, the one with a fruit on the end. Take your male flower and just rub it all in there. Get all that pollen off into the female. And you may need to do it multiple times to ensure the fruit has been pollinated. But give it some time and you will have some developing cucumbers on your plants. Why are my beans not flowering? Well, it's a simple question. And just look at the plants. Look at your leaves. They are wilting. Unlike this bush bean, pole beans are large plants and they need a lot of water to support their growth. These plants are simply drying out too quickly in their grow bags. And as you know, a struggling plant cannot make healthy fruit. So a quick fix is to fill some kind of shallow container with some water. Take your grow bag and plop it in the water and wait for the water to be wicked up. And once this container empties, every once in a while, just fill it up and just keep it in here. And this is perfect for those hot summer days where you realize that your plants have been in the ground for over two months and still haven't produced anything. How to prune your tomato plants. If you have indeterminate tomatoes, there are two pruning methods. First one is to remove all the suckers to leave your main stem to continue growing. Which means that every time you see one of these, you pinch it out. And the suckers will be growing in between the main stem and the leaf pinch it out like that. This method allows for earlier fruit production. A second method is to leave these suckers on. As you can see on this plant, I've left at least three suckers on this plant. This method allows for overall more fruit production than pruning the suckers. If you've got determinate tomatoes like these ones, it's best to let them go wild and not prune off any suckers, and this will allow for more overall fruit production. But a general rule of thumb for all tomatoes is to remove the bottom foot of growth to reduce any disease on the plants. If you got some flowers that are a little bit past their prime, here's how to prune them off to ensure that your future blooms will be just as beautiful. You might be thinking to cut it right at the top there, but that is the wrong way to do it. You're going to want to follow the stem and locate where it branches off to your next flower. And for me, that is right here and you're going to want to make a cut right there. That will ensure that all the energy is sent up to your next bloom, which is yet to open. Then let me show you again. You trace this one down, and you get it right there. Make a cut there. Now all the energy is sent to this bloom. And this is called deadheading, and it really works with any flower. I have a calendula right here, but it works just as well with marigolds or any other flower that you have. If you've got a lot of empty space in your garden, a good way to fill it is with some bush beans. Just pull away the mulch, grab your seeds, I like to put two of them, and just push them down in there. You can plant them pretty deep, and just close up the hole. And pat it down. You can even put the mulch back, they do come through. You can even go equidistant from your tomato plants, at this distance here, come in the middle, plant one right here. And these small plants won't in any way affect the growth of your massive tomatoes. But it is one of the ways that you can grow more food in the same space. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sow radishes. First thing you're going to want to do is find a good area. I have this raised bed and just clear all the large debris like these little pieces of wood that might accumulate over time. You don't want to interfere with the radish tap roots. Next thing you want to do is fertilize with a high phosphorus slow release fertilizer like this bone meal. And just sprinkle it all over the top like this. Get it nice and everywhere in there. Next you want to get your hose and moisten the area where you're going to plant your seeds. This 
This will ensure that the seeds stick to the surface of the soil. Next, you want to take your seeds and just scatter them. You don't want to go too heavy. I mean, then you'll just have to thin them out later. But just scatter them around. Especially if they're not a large radish, then you get some nice spacing. Then once your seeds are down, cover it with some more soil. Again, trying to avoid those large pieces. Here's how to trellis your wild grapes. And by wild, I mean just kind of came up out of the ground one day. But this plant is a riverbank grape. And for the most part, it does a pretty good job of attaching to itself. You can see the tendrils grab onto itself when it has to. But every once in a while, I do like to attach one of these to the wood, which is just two nails and some wire to keep the vines in place. And even when they do outgrow this and you prune them off, these will still be here for the future stems that will attach to it. And of course, this is not a professional trellis, but it's good to improvise and use what you have in the garden. So I recently uploaded a short on how to sow these radish seeds, and this is an update. And this is what they're looking like. As you can see it's all right it's a bit sparse in some areas so I'm gonna re-sow so take your seeds and sow where you need it to be filled in you can see it's kind of right here and a little bit in the back all the seeds kind of rolled into the middle I guess it wasn't even and just scatter them like before don't worry too much about placement but where they go they'll be just fine it's important to recognize things like this in the garden because a lot of people become discouraged if they see their seeds don't come up or something wrong happens in the garden. But you know, it's completely normal and you just have to learn from it and you have to continue going. So especially for something like radishes, they don't take very long so you can sow them again. Just don't give up if it's not picture perfect. How to fertilize your fruiting plants to ensure you get abundant harvests. In this example, I have a raspberry bush, but it really works with any fruiting or flowering plant. Like tomatoes, cucumbers, or even this calendula. So you want to get a 5-gallon bucket like this, and you want to prepare a high potassium and calcium fertilizer. So I've prepared this solution with banana peels, onion peels, and eggshells, and you just let it sit in water for about a week to get the nutrients into that water. And after a week, your fertilizer is ready to use. So you just want to take a little cup like this, get some in there, maybe like that, and pour it into your watering can. Then you want to get your hose and fill the rest of your can up with water. And for heavy feeders like tomatoes, apply this mixture every two to three weeks. Okay, so just a quick update on my worm bin. I set this up about five days ago. I just want to show you how the worms are doing. So they're actually starting to eat. You can see because these are the castings, all these little brown things. Those are all the worm castings, which are the worm poop. And that means that they're starting to be a little more active, which means that it's time to feed them. General rule of thumb is to feed them after one week of them being in here, but I'm getting a little bit impatient and I want to see the worms work. So I got a bin of food scraps here and you don't want to overdo it with the worms, especially I mean, I only have 50 in here for now. They will double after about 90 days, but you don't want to do it at, overdo it at first. And it's always good to cut pieces like this into smaller pieces. It'll take less time for the worms to decompose. Okay, now that you have all your scraps cut up, just get some, put them in there. Like I said, you don't want to overdo it. Yeah, that's it. Stay tuned for updates. This is the perfect time to thin out your radish seedlings because the true leaves are emerging on all of them. So radishes can be planted pretty dense. I mean, the taproot is only about this big, right? So when you're pulling them, just pull out the ones that are really close like this. Or don't, don't even pull them out. Snap them at the root level so you don't disturb the roots of this one here. And I'll show you that again. Some that are really close like this, snap one of them out. You got that? snap one of these out and now you just increase the space for these radishes to take over now when you're done it's gonna look like you just pulled out half your seedlings which you did but you're gonna get a much larger harvest than if you were to leave them all crowded all the tap roots would be very very tiny now like this you get big radishes but fewer of them look at these cabbage moth caterpillars 
they're absolutely destroying my kale plants and they're even leaving some gifts behind. And how do you get rid of these caterpillars? Well for the already developed caterpillars, just pick them off, throw them on the ground, and we'll step on them later. Get them all off. Make sure they don't destroy any more of your plants. And you also have to check your leaves for eggs. So just turn them around, and look, there's an egg right there. See this tiny thing right here? If it'll focus, you gotta pick that off. Squish it, and it won't come back. This one, there's another egg right there. See, they're very tiny, you have to look very carefully. And pick it off, and just squish it in between your fingers. And if the moth returns, just keep doing it. I mean, you may lose a crop, it's one season. See, mine are slowly dying, so it's fine. It's always a good time to look for pests in the garden, especially for something as prolific as aphids. And these lettuce plants are hosting some aphids. And I've noticed them more on this variety, the slow boat variety of lettuce. There are aphids on here more, but they are on these ones back here too. And to get rid of them, get a spray bottle, mix some pure Castile soap. I use Dr. Bronner's about a tablespoon and then fill up the rest with water. Get a nice shake and just spray it right in the middle there where the aphids are. And that should get the lettuce and it's always good to check your other plants too. Especially if something is curling like this on this tomato. Just check for pests. This one is okay. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sow green onions or scallions. You first want to clear the mulch from the area that you want to sow. Then you're going to run your finger through it and create this little trench that the seeds are going to go into. You see that? Then you're going to take your seeds and scatter them evenly throughout the trench. Make sure to get it, get it everywhere. And then you're just going to want to close it back up. Close it all up and pat it down. Then you want to take your hose and water them in. Make sure the soil is nice and moist. And that's it. Come back for part two where I'll be thinning the young plants. Today I'm going to be transplanting some late summer seedlings next to my determinate tomatoes. For this lettuce, to support the green leaf growth, I like to take some organic blown bone meal, sprinkle it in the hole, make sure you get it all on the sides there, and just plop your plant in, backfill, and press the soil down. And for the kale, brassicas require a lot of nitrogen, so put a nice, generous scoop of blood meal in there, pop your plant, and backfill. Remember to always keep brassicas moist, they don't like to dry out. It's pretty hot today, so I'm going to give them an extra water. It's always good to water your seedlings after, because see, they're already starting to wilt. You know, they, they've, they've been inside for a long time, they're not used to the heat. And like I said, these are thirsty plants, so give them a lot of water. You can even spray the leaves if you want, it'll help to cool. Once you have your freshly harvested garlic, you need to cure it. So after pulling, do not cut anything, do not wash anything, leave the stems and the leaves on, and leave the roots on, and leave all this dirt on. This will help to naturally preserve the garlic over time, and it should last at least six months in your pantry, in your cold storage, your cellar. And you're gonna wanna lay it out on a table like this. It doesn't need to be too perfect, too flat and you want to let it sit here for a few weeks and wait for the roots and all the leaves to become brittle. So then the soil should dry and all these should snap off and after that you can store it however you like. You can tie it up, make a braid or just hang it like that. You can cut it about two inches from the bulb, store it like that in your fridge, in the cellar, whatever you like. Today's episode one of Raising Monarch Butterflies. So the first thing you need is milkweed. So if you don't have any milkweed, plant some. And if you do, check the leaves of your plants every day, every single leaf, the bottom, to see if there's any 
eggs sitting there from any butterflies. And if you've seen any monarch butterflies in your area, then obviously there's a greater chance and check after they have left. So the eggs look like this. They are very tiny, but you will notice them, especially because they're only the only thing on the underside of the leaf. So that leaf with the egg, you want to clip it from the plant and place it into a mason jar very, very carefully and only put one leaf per plant or one egg per plant. They, it may look like a lot of space, but they will grow big and they will eat a lot. Then you want to take your lid and just place it on very loosely. Do not tighten it or else it'll get very humid and the caterpillar won't be able to breathe. So stay tuned for part two where the egg hatches. Today I'm going to be planting some more late summer seedlings. Now these are bare root seedlings you could call them. They were just sitting in a bucket of water here. So you have to be very gentle. And firstly, don't transplant when the sun is still out. That's a bad time to do it. It's going to burn your seedlings. But I'm doing it now. Do as I say, not as I do. So just clear the mulch, make a little hole, and drop your seedling. Then you want to backfill, press it in, and put the mulch back. I have a grass clipping and leaf mulch. And again, move the mulch over. You see all the little worms and bugs and microbes in here. Make a small hole, drop in your seedling, backfill, press it down, and put your mulch back. It'll help retain the moisture and the sun. And that's it. Look at these Japanese beetles. They're destroying my grapevine, making all these holes in the leaves. Today I'm going to show you how to get rid of them. So you're going to want to locate the leaf that they're on. That should be right here. And you're going to want to snip it and grab it. See, they're all there. You want to lay it on the floor. Take your big boot. And make sure they're all dead. You don't need them anywhere near your garden. So kill them. Japanese beetles are invasive and can quickly take over and demolish a harvest. So you don't want them near your garden. You don't want to feel mercy. You just kill them. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that caterpillar. Isn't life just beautiful? Look how tiny it is compared to my finger. After a few days, your monarch eggs should have hatched. This took about three, four days. Could take up to a week. And you can see it's already starting to eat through the milkweed. The only thing you have to do now is put it back in its jar, close the lid very loosely, and only add new leaves when it needs it. Holy, this one's even smaller. This one probably came out this morning. This is a nasturtium, and it is a very interesting plant. You can see here that the leaves are actually waterproof. The water just rolls right off the leaf, like that drop there. And this is because of their natural ecosystem, where they have evolved growing in places like this, covered by a dense jungle canopy. This means that they didn't get much sunlight, and when debris fell on their leaves and got absorbed, they would get even less sunlight. So they have evolved to have waterproof leaves so that the water would be pushed off, collecting any dirt that has settled, and thus have more room for photosynthesis. It is also a very interesting garden plant. Aside from having beautiful leaves and flowers, the plant acts as a sort of trap crop where aphids and other pests would rather eat this plant instead of your other vegetables. So interplant nasturtiums with your vegetables. How to fix your tomatoes after a storm. There were some really strong winds and heavy rains this morning and I got some leaning stems, which is not good. So take a piece of string and tie every loose stem back to its stick. When a stem starts to bend like that, it can put a lot of strain on the bend point. Like this, you can see those brown spots that is strained because of the bending. Over time, this will heal itself, like this callus here. This was bent and it calloused over. Or you can make a sort of cast like this, wrap a piece of string over the damaged point, and it should heal within a few days. And if you got some short sticks, like me, it could be worth putting a nail on the fence. 
tie the loose stem back to the nail and you should be good for now. And always remember to do some pruning to increase airflow. Today I'll be direct sowing some plants in the garden. The first one I have is the provider bean and it's good for the edges and borders of your raised bed like I have here. And you just want to take two, just push them down in there. They can go pretty deep and they can go pretty close too inches three four inches and I have some borage which is a great companion plant and it attracts a lot of pollinators especially bees bees really like it and it's good to incorporate with your other vegetables so again with this just take two seeds push them down a little bit not as deep as the beans obviously it's a smaller seed cover it up and I wouldn't don't put the mulch back they don't come through like the beans do this is a great way to fill in a lot of the gaps now that we have in the midsummer season after we've been harvesting. Just to fill those holes to make sure you're not wasting. Today I'm going to be showing you how to turn this sprouted cellar onion into new onions. So the first thing you want to do is peel all the outer layers till you're left with the core where you see the sprouts coming out of. After the first layer you can start to see some new roots but just keep peeling because you want to separate out all these sprouts here. And you may need a knife as well. So get a knife that you can use to cut the peels and it will smell and your hands will smell. So we got to the first branch off point here and you can see where it separates. So you just wanna separate that very, very carefully. And you can put this piece directly into soil, but I like to put it first in a cup of water. And keep peeling and you should come to another branch off point where there are two clear onions here. These will both become two separate onions. So separate those out very carefully, put them in your glass of water, and wait for them to get roots, and maybe should be a week, and you can plant them in soil in your garden. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a beautiful garden bouquet. So first fill up a glass with cold water. You want it to be cold so that the flowers can rejuvenate after they've been picked. Then you want to pick your flowers. I like to use whatever flowers I have. I got some oregano flowers and some sow thistle and regular thistle. They are wild. The oregano I planted but this, the thistles are wild. You can also pick some leaves like these variegated nasturtium leaves. I think they look great mixed in with the flowers. Then you want to take your first flower and put it in the glass and this is when you want to see if this is the correct size that you want. If not, cut it to size. Then you want to strip all the leaves and place it in the glass. Repeat this process and you should have a beautiful garden bouquet. And if your leaves are wilting a little bit like this, it's completely normal. After they've been sitting in the water for a little bit, they should come back. 